I'm here today to kind of bring us um, the other speakers, you know, everything that they've been talking about, about who you are as a leader, the style you might have. I'm here today to kind of bring that together um, and think about it on the practical side of who you are. Do you want to share that with others? How do you want to share that with others, specifically in the digital space? Because in today's 24-7 digital world, we're seeing, um, you know, every day there's a new social media platform, there's a new buzzword, you know, and um, that doesn't mean you need to be involved in all of it. So I'm here to just kind of shed some light on how to think about if it's right for you to take your leadership style and your brand into the digital space and how to do that. A little background about me very quickly. Um, you know, it's not a topic that I, I just uh, speak about for fun. I actually spent more than 10 years working in marketing and public relations. Four of those years I ran my own freelance consulting business where the majority of my work focused on um, working with social media strategy with clients and individuals um, trying to take their brand online. So this is a, a topic that I've, I've been involved with for many, many years prior to um, becoming a career counselor here at Columbia. So the first thing I want to talk about, and I'll kind of gloss over this because I think the other speakers have done a great job of covering this, but just the meaning of branding. You know, um, Allison mentioned Nike, Apple, we have a Google representative here. I mean, these are all brands that whether you use their products or not, you know about them. Most of you in the audience have probably heard about them. You can recall the logo that they have. There's some sort of value associated with those images or trust or use, you know, product that you use. So you have it in your mind. Um, and what we often overlook when we're talking about your own brand and if you might want to take that online is that these companies spent a lot of money, a lot of people, a lot of messaging, testing, strategy over many years to kind of develop the brand that they have. So the great thing about thinking about your own brand is that you have full control over that entire process. It doesn't all have to be done at once. What's different, or it's different for every person. So keep this in mind, kind of the process I'll walk you through here in a moment. This is a progression. It takes time, it takes thought. And one handout I have at the end um, to kind of guide you through everything you've learned today is actually um, a brand worksheet that will ask you the types of questions um, to get you kind of synthesizing everything you learned today on who you are as a leader. So what are your interests, your values, your passions, um, taking into consideration what you've learned from the other speakers. What is your goal for sharing it online? Do you need to? Not everybody needs to. So think about, is your goal to kind of move up in your own organization? you may not need to be sharing that in a public space, right? But if you're trying to build a business, if you're trying to become a leader in your industry um, and, and be more well known or you know, get more speaking engagements, whatever it is, that might be a reason to start to think about bringing your brand in the digital space. So this is the slide I suggest taking a picture of if you wanna keep it in mind. Um, this is something I've developed over the past 12... Um, Oh, can we? Yes, yes, you can. Um, so there's really four primary elements to developing your, your brand in the digital space. I would say 99% of what you do um, is going to fall into these four buckets that we'll go over um, as, as quickly as I can. Um, and then at the bottom, this is something I've developed the past couple years. What I see with people taking brands online, whether it's a leadership brand, a personal brand, or a professional brand, is what I call the three C's. And that is to be clear, to be concise and to be consistent in your messaging. If you do not do those three things, your brand will not get off the ground, I guarantee it. Um, especially with the younger, the students that are now freshmen in college, this is the first batch of Gen Z students we're seeing. Um, they grew up with an average of three to four screens from birth, right? So they had computers, iPads, televisions, gaming consoles. So you need to be concise and clear and consistent in the messaging that you're putting out there. So first, take control of your image. How many people here have Googled themselves? Be honest with me. Yeah? Good. Okay. I had an audience once where no one raised their hand and I'm like, that is a lie. <laughs> We've all done it. Um, but Google yourself. Take control of the image that's out there. I was lucky enough 
Thankfully, where Facebook was not a thing when I was in college, there are not images out there around any shenanigans that went on during my college days or my singing days, um, so I didn't have to do too much cleaning up. But take a look at what's out there. Google variations of your name, your name plus your college. Just see what images and content is out there and decide what you might want to mark private, what you might want to try to get deleted or um, you know, hidden or, or keep things to yourself and what you think is valuable to have out there for someone to Google you and see, right? Um, Facebook is a good example. How many people have Facebook pages? Most of you probably, yep. How many use it mainly for personal reasons? Good amount, okay. And how many of those check your privacy settings every three months? A, cup, a handful, okay, so do that, all right? Facebook, for example, changes their privacy settings often. Um, nothing too crazy, but you wanna always check that. If you wanna keep it private, you need to take control of what's already online about you. Um, the other thing that I would say for taking control of your image is there are a lot of ways to kind of get started if you're not already. Professional headshots. There's an association here on campus, Columbia Photography Association, that has um, students who are even willing to do that for a small fee. Start getting headshots. Start collecting visuals, projects, anything you've done at work that might speak to the brand you might want to share online. Get it together. Check if your company has proprietary policies or rules and be ready to share that. Next, pick your platform. I have to say the biggest mistake I see companies I've worked with make, uh, individuals I've worked with make, is that we think that we need to be on all platforms all the time. That is not true. Um, I can't tell you lately, um, Eric and I briefly were talking about uh, Snapchat. Everybody, Snapchat, Snapchat, it's the buzzword. Everyone's talking about it, right? Personally, I don't use it. I don't need to use it for my brand. You may decide as you dig into different platforms that one might make sense more than the other, but just because you hear of a new platform or it sounds cool and the kids these days are using it, it doesn't mean you need to be using it, right? It depends what your goal is that this worksheet that I mentioned will walk you through. It depends what that audience is, where are they, right? So you do not need to feel like you need to be on every platform um, in order to get your leadership and your brand across to your audience. The most common platforms used in this way are typically Twitter. Um, Instagram's becoming a, a, a more popular for this type of thing depending on, on what you do, and we'll talk about that in a minute, but Twitter, LinkedIn, Blogging and personal websites, those are the top four we see consistently year after year. So keep those in mind and explore those on your own. Um, the next is to create and share content. Honestly, this is where um, the majority of your work, if you do decide to take your brand online, will come into play. Um, you know, thinking about who you're trying to reach, why you're trying to reach them, you may find that you have to create your own content. You may um, be able to write articles. You may be able to share images, share visuals. Um, the most shareable content that we see time and time again is anything visual, infographic related, um, anything very timely. But at the same time, any content you create is gonna need to be um, professional. It's always better to have a personal element to it, but um, you know, if you are not a political commentator, for example, you may not want to be tweeting publicly about the election going on right now, right? I've had a few moments where I would like to, but uh, my brand is focused on uh, teaching others about branding and education, so it's just not going to make sense. So keep that in mind. How am I doing on time, guys? Okay, good. Um, so a few quick tips um, for getting content out there. I can't tell you what content you should be thinking about. I can't do that. Um, you know, it really depends on the individual brand that you have, but broadly speaking, one to three posts a day, um, targeting the audience that you're looking for is really going to be the best bet. I already mentioned the types, the visuals, the infographics that are important. If nothing else, if you're just getting started dipping your toe in the digital space, there are websites, plenty of them, to help you create websites, um, Weebly, Squarespace, to help you find keywords to reach audiences, Hashtagify, um, there's another one, WriteTag. I mean, these are all platforms that are free that can help you kind of get going in this space on your own, whether you work with a career coach or, or any, um, an executive coach, um, these will kind of help you there. So for the sake of time, I have a few examples. I'll just go over one. Um, but I wanted to just show you an example of someone who's really done an amazing job of kind of using the right platforms and sharing the right content to get their brand online. Feel free to visit her website. This is actually someone I've known for 20 years. 
Um, so I can also attest to the fact that the personality, you know, who she is, it really comes through in the brand as well. Um, in the middle here, you see a website. Um, you see her. She is an artist. She is a creative director, a lifestyle food photographer. She's also a brand consultant. But she started out behind the scenes. She spent many years working as a disc jockey on the radio. She spent many years curating art um, in Michigan and Florida art galleries. And when she moved to the Napa Valley region, she decided it was time to reach out on her own and build her own business. So the platforms she chose were not LinkedIn. It was not writing articles, you know, sharing them with others. It was showcasing the visual elements of her company and what she could do. So on the right, you see an Instagram feed with beautiful photos that are her photos. You see her website. You see her with her camera. And on the left is just a snapshot of her blog. So those were the three things she chose to highlight her brand. And since then, she's, be, she's been um, featured and, and retweeted by Huffington Post, Martha Stewart, Epicurious. These are all, you know stemming from these platforms that she chose. And if you look at her website and all of these elements that I'm pointing out, you will notice those three C's, clear, consistent, concise. Every single one of these pages has her brand attached to it. So the last one, step up your networking game. Network, network, network. We talk about it all the time. You're doing it this weekend. It's not fun for some of us, but um, it's, you know, it's necessary. So you can network online. When I started my own business, about 50% of my clients and my leads came from connections that I actually started initially online. So this came from connections I made through in person at a networking event. We connected online and then I was able to get introduced to a potential client through someone on LinkedIn that I connected with, right? Um, Twitter chats, industry groups industry chats or webinars, things that are going on in your industry, you can connect with people virtually and then start to turn that into um, sharing your brand or whatever goal you have if it's building a business in my case. You can connect with people in the online space. I actually did Twitter chats here and there and I would actually see you know, the Twitter handle image, the picture, and then I would go to an event you know, somewhere like in Austin, Texas and I would actually see that person. So it is possible to go back and forth between in-person networking and networking in the online space. So lastly, I just want to leave you with something that I think is also really important. I don't know why everything I suggest has threes, the rule of threes to it, but um, the three R's. These, this is something I have talked for years and years and years about to people, to clients, um, to friends that are just asking my advice. Branding is a process. I know we throw the word around a lot. It's a newer kind of buzzword here in the career development world, but Always remember that this is a process. The way you start is not the way you end. Things are gonna change. You always need to revisit your brand as a leader. Your values might have shifted. Your perspective might have shifted. The way you lead might have developed and become better over time. So revisit who you are as a leader and how you wanna share that with people, whether it's in person or in this case online. Um, reinvest your time. So I am notorious. I sit here and I talk to you about branding online. I'm notorious when I have a busy week, like this week. If you go to my Twitter feed, I haven't tweeted all week. I, it's, I have other things going on and then I remember, oh yeah, I need to be focusing on this element. So reinvest your time. Take a look at what you're doing. Have you been doing it too long? Are you skipping over other ways you could reach out to people? Just always kind of reevaluate that. And then reinvent your strategy as you go along. If something's not working, try something else. You might think Twitter makes sense for you. If it's not working, it is okay to kind of tweak that. You know, all these brands we've been talking about, Google, Nike, Apple, again, they took time and testing and messaging to really hone in on what that brand is. So nothing is always gonna be set in stone. It is what you make it. So you have the power to kind of cultivate your brand and decide how you wanna share it with others. And that's, that's what I have today. Yeah, you're welcome.